Hi everybody! Today I don't have a new plugin for you, and I don't have updates for plugins, and I don't give you new features. And yes, you haven't heard from me for weeks, but this has a reason. And the today's video will be in two parts. One is looking back what we have, and one is looking into the future. And in the second part of that video, you will hear about the reasons why I've been so silent. So it's October and um, last November, I started releasing plugins from the Series 2. So that is about a year and I want to release the version number one, the not beta version, however you call it, saying this as if that would make a difference. But this will mean that the older plugins will move in the kind of legacy section and the Series 2 plugins are at the mixing plugins from Tukan Studios. But there is more in this world than just mixing plugins. But let's see the set of the Series 2 plugins that we have so far. When we're mixing music or other audio, the most essential things, of course, are the volume faders and the panorama knobs. And of course, that's a built-in feature in the Reaper mixer. But for everything else, we need mixing plugins. And all my work for the Reaper community was dedicated to make usable mixing plugins for you. So let's see the basic and essential things for mixing. And that would be an equalizer, where we have the orange EQ that features high pass filter, low shelf, high shelf, and three picking bonds. And yes, of course, the filters are decramped. And this equalizer learned to fly with the green dynamic EQ. So this is a regular EQ and this is the dynamic version of it. And talking about equalizers, there's one equalizer that is loved by so many people. So I made a version of it and this is the EQT2 Khan. The next thing that would come to my mind when mixing music would be dynamic units like compressors. And this is the Blue Compressor Series 2, which in a way is a regular digital compressor, very clean. But this also has some special features like the sidechain high pass filter, an adjustable knee, a dry wet knob for parallel processing, this little trick thing which can turn it in kind of a gate. And we have this um, scope view here where we can see the incoming audio and adjust the threshold. And by the way, all the Series 2 plugins can be resized, all the Series 2 plugins can be um, linked across the whole project. All the Series 2 plugins have this processing selection. All Series 2 plugins can be oversampled. But let's see another compressor. And this is an absolute classic. Everyone wants to use this in their mixes, so I made a version of this. This is the Tucan Tronics LA Tucan. And of course, there's the other vintage classic compressor. And this would be the NC76, which also has some advanced features. So the punch button gives you more attack. Um, there's also this trick thing, which turns it into a gate. And besides the regular ratios, we also can choose special ratios like all out is a two by one and all in mode. The third vintage classic compressor would be the Varibus which is a compressor with very much, let's call it character and um, tube things and advanced features like um, high pass for the detector chain. You can tweak the very um, behavior of this thing and you can use it in stereo mode or dual mono or even do mid and side processing here. And this is a good compressor for uh, single tracks and also for a mix bus. And that's why it's called Vary Bus. But there's another bus compressor, which is also a classic. So we have the bus compressor series 2, which can also do stereo, dual mono or mid end side. It even features a sidechain input, maybe for bus ducking or things like that. And here are the special features are more the um, auto settings for attack and release. But that's not all about compressors because there's another one and this is the five band multiband processor. And this is not only a multiband compressor, but also a multiband envelope shaper, which brings us to other plugins from the dynamics section. And this is the envelope shaper, a simple plugin with only three or four knobs. 
but it can have a huge impact on your sound. And of course, speaking about dynamics manipulation, we also need an expander or a gate. And this also has advanced features like the inverse gate and features like the hysteresis when the gate closes and a look ahead so you don't cut your transients and sidechain high pass filter and the expander mode. So this can do everything you need about gates and expanders. And another very important thing about Dynamics plugins, of course, is a limiter. And this looks quite simple, but is a true peak limiter. So it does intersample peak detection and it can also be used as a maximizer where you would set target um, output and um, then you lower the limit and the output will go to the maximizer output. So we had equalizers and dynamics. Let's see the more obvious things. So what we would need is a delay. And here we have the cocky delay with adjustable delay timer, of course, and a little filter thing for high pass and low pass. And um, it can do ping pong stereo things and bit crush effects. And you can set your delay time automatically to your um, project BPM. But that's a very clean digital delay. And for all the fans of this reggae dub stuff and 70s psychedelic sounds and more experimental things, we had the Tucanoplex Tape Echo, which is a delay effect that emulates the sound of uh, tape echo machines. And um, you can choose from different tape modes and have your input drive setting here and a little equalizer. And it also does these funny tape effects when you change the um, delay time. So enough delays. What we would need for a good mix also would be a reverb. And here we have the highly adjustable Lexicon Series 2 which has different pages for adjusting the reverb things here, like equalizer and other equalizer, the reverberation page where you can see what it's doing here. And you can also adjust everything here from the um, display. It features five algorithms for the reverbs from ambience to room and small and hall and plate. So this would be mixing plugins in the first place. We would, um, yeah, need equalizers and everything about dynamics and delays and reverbs. And that should be enough to make a good sounding basic mix. But sometimes when you're doing a mix, you need some kind of tools. And that brings me to the plugin named Tool, which is a little signal management plugin, but it can come very handy in certain cases. And another plugin from the Tool range would be the um, denoiser plugin which really can remove noise from your recordings. And another plugin from the tool range would be the de -esser. And then there is a special tool which is very adjustable. And this is the Swinx Series 2. And I hope you all remember this nose removal. And it also um, has this Swinx Rider, which is a volume rider that reacts to the incoming audio level. And then there is a tool plugin that has no effect to the audio, but we need it all the time. And this is the metering plugin. And this can meter a lot of stuff. And it always does a metering history in the circles view. And we can meter um, loops, we can meter RMS or um, maximums or left and right. Um, we have a view meter. Everything is adjustable with target levels and over levels. It features a stereo goniometer. So when it comes to metering, this would be my go-to plugin. And then we have the plugins for making um, more interesting sounds by adding in things and uh, do some creative mixing. And this plugin category would be modulation plugins. And here I made the black light modulation, which is a tremolo and autopon and auto filter and phaser and flanger and chorus all in one plugin. So in a way that could be six plugins. And from the same category, we have this um, exciter with fat bottom series two, which can add sub harmonics and features an exciter stage. And for all the fans of this vintage gear and the warmth and saturation and gluing a mix things, we also had this tap recorder plugin. And of course, one of my biggest projects in the series two was the combination of the channel strip, which can give you saturation of different desk types. So we had this vintage desk or this very famous desk and another very famous desk. And it has this gate, a compressor with um, also this vary mode. 
equalizer, output and output clip saturation. And this comes in combination with the Sumbus plugin for your mix bus. And I think you all remember that these things can be grouped together. So if I switch them to group one, um, they can interact with each other. So if I choose another desk here, the other plugin would change that too. And last but not least, we have the plugins for the amp simulation. The guitar station plugin, which is a combination of um, four amps and four cabinets and seven microphones on different microphone positions which all is done by using impulse responses. And this also features a big pedal board where you can change the order of your pedals and adjust everything. But we're not all guitarists, so let's don't ignore the bassists. So there's also the bass station series too, which is kind of similar. So we see the pedals, but there are differences in the pedals and there are new impulse responses, different microphones, different amps, different cabinets, and this um, LA3 Khan, which I made, which is a compressor that is really suited to the needs for compressing bass guitars. So now we saw 27 plugins and some of the plugins do the job where other manufacturers would make five or six or seven plugins for. And I think this really covers more than the essentials for mixing. No, I would say you could mix an entire song or entire album with these plugins, as long as it's not about very special plugins that you would need. Yes! This is the reason why you haven't heard from me for weeks, because I turned to make synthesizer plugins. And no, I don't have a synthesizer plugin for you now. I'm still prototyping and writing code and refining stuff. And I didn't expect making synthesizer plugins being so difficult, but I already made some progress and I wanted to show what I already have. And I wanted to say that there will be synthesizer plugins, but this will take some time. And this means that there will be a time without a new plugins. But hey, we just saw that there are already a lot of plugins that you can use. So let's see what we have there. So what I already have is a synthesizer that features four oscillators on um, two pages. So we have oscillator one and two and three and four. And of course, these can be set to different oscillator shapes. And of course, there's a volume envelope that can be adjusted in many ways. And we can already choose from a big variety of different filters um, that can be adjusted with cutoff and resonance. And we have a filter envelope um, so that we can do some filter sweeps and all stuff like that. And each oscillator also features um, two additional envelopes that can be used for modulating parameters. And for this purpose, every oscillator has its um, modulation matrix. So um, you could choose um, the modulator um, from just on over um, some control voltage inputs and LFOs and mod wheel and aftertouch. Let's say we would choose um, LFO1 modulate via mod wheel and um, you can switch if it's a minus and plus or if it's percentage. You can set the amount of modulation and the offset for the modulation. So for all of you who are familiar with modulation matrix, this might be telling you something. So as we can obviously see, every voice has four modulators and it's a 12 voice polyphonic synthesizer. And LFOs can be adjusted here in different shapes and offsets and time sync and speed things. And the synthesizer already features an effect section with chorus, flanger, phaser, delay and reverb. Then there's this master output page down here where we have additional filter and level envelope. The settings page is empty. So you see I have to do a lot of work additionally to um, put in some more features and more features and more features but I cannot even promise that this prototype will make it to a release plugin. So maybe release plugins may be looking completely different, but this prototype is what I have so far. So now let's hear it again. This was this. Let's change some settings. Let's go and enable this um, oscillator three. 
and um, let's go to the effects section, turn on the chorus, and we have a different sound that you might know. Or we could choose another preset. And as you can see, I still have some sliders here for um, features that have no visual elements in the GUI, like offset for an oscillator, bit reduction, or even um, oscillator syncing. But let's hear another sound. And this will be it for today. I have another sound example for you where I stacked uh, multiple instances of this synthesizer prototype. And uh, this will play a little song for you, but I won't tell you the name of the song. You can ask for that in the comments section. So let's hear it and have fun with the existing plugins and bye bye.